What's up everyone, with this video let's restore this insanely unexposed image using Photoshop. As always if you plan on following along this Photoshop tutorial, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always since we are working with Photoshop we are doing the basic raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. And just for your information, usually for a scene like this, I recommend to shoot an HDR sequence, since this will give you the best quality. But since Adobe has added the new AI noise removal, we can try fixing this underexposed shot. So first let's change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will already boost the darkest areas just a little bit. Now let's go into the basic tab. The most obvious thing we could do is to just raise the exposure. So let's do that. You can see how we can nicely recover details here from the shadows. But if you're going too high, we lose a lot of details in the bright sky. So we don't want that. The trick is to find a nice balance. So I'm going to bring down the exposure just a little bit. I think that's a good spot. And at the same time, I want to bring down the highlights so we don't get this blown out sky. Of course, this image is still very, very dark. So let's fix that by bringing up the shadows. And this is what really helps with scenes like this. Now the histogram also looks much, much better. We can improve it a little more. I do think I want to bring down the blacks just a little bit to bring back some of that contrast. And I think I might as well bring up the contrast slider itself. So that's looking pretty good. At this point, I also want to add some texture and bring down the clarity and the dehaze to create a very soft look for this shot. Finally, let's also raise the vibrance since we want this image to be saturated. And here we have the image after those basic adjustments. So you can see we went from this very, very unexposed shot to this scene. We do have a lot of details in the shadows now. The area around the sun is still overexposed, but you will never, never, never get the exposure for the sun right. It will always be overexposed. So don't worry about that. We can add a few effects around this area to make it look cool though. Now overall, the image does look a bit washed out. I want to change that by making use of a bunch of masks. So let's head into the masking panel. First off, what I want to do is to create a radial gradient around the brightest area of the image. Let's say just like that. And maybe bring down the feather a bit. And now what I want to do is to invert this radial gradient. So everything except for this brightest spot will be affected. Now what I want to do with this mask is to just bring up the whites, further introducing some more brightness to the image without blowing out the sky. This is looking really, really good. Let's adjust the position of the radial gradient just to be safe. All right. Next up, I want to use, I want to make use of another radial gradient. Let's bring up the feather to 100 and I want to make it thin and rather white. Just place it on top of the sun. Also I'm making sure it overlap, it's overlapping the landscape in the foreground because I want to add some kind of glow effect by simply raising the blacks. And we can tweak the glow some more by bringing down the clarity. And I think I'm also going to bring down the dehaze to make it extra juicy. Perfect. To make this image look less washed out, I want to mainly focus on the foreground since this is an area where we want to have some strong contrast and some rather dark tones. So let's start this by creating a linear gradient. Just roughly placing one like this. And in here I'm bringing down the exposure creating some kind of vignetting effect. At the same time, I want to bring up the contrast. And let's see, I think we should bring up the blacks just to be safe, not risking too much underexposure this way. And we can bring up the clarity. This will give us some very nice detail right here in the foreground. Then I want to work on the tree, which should have some more detail. Let's create a new mask and let's try the select objects mask. With this mask, I'm just painting over the tree, just like this. And let's see, we do get a 
kind of good selection but not everything as I want so I'm going to paint over it one more time. Let's see, this does make it a little better, let's work with this. And what I want to do here is to first add some texture. And again I'm making use of clarity to bring out the details. And let's also bring up the contrast. Perfect. Now let's create another linear gradient for pretty much all of the foreground like this. Again I want to introduce contrast. Again this kind of serves like a fake vignetting effect so this is looking really really good down here. I also want to work with texture giving this area more detail and I'm also going to use clarity to further increase this effect. All right, this is looking really, really good. Now I do want to apply one more radial gradient just for a stronger glow effect. Then making it rather big. Again, I'm placing the center above the sun and I'm making sure it's overlapping the trees on both sides. That's because I want to have some glow going over the trees. And in here, again, I'm just making use of increased blacks, just like this. And this is looking good, but what I want to do is to increase the color intensity in here. So let's bring up the temperature, which will give this area a very strong golden hour light. Perfect. Now this is looking really, really good. So we went from this image, rather flat and washed out, to this version, which is much more contrast rich. So you can see this is looking pretty good so far. What I want to do next is a bit of color grading. So let's hop into the color mixer panel. And I do want to bring up the orange saturation as well as the blue saturation. Just a bit. And then I'm going to switch over to the luminance tab to bring up the blue luminance just a notch. And I even want to increase the yellow luminance a little bit at least which will nicely make the foreground a little more contrast rich. Wonderful. Now for the fun part, let's do also apply some split toning. Let's start with the highlights. And since we're working with the sunset image, I'm going with a warm hue first. So maybe somewhere here in the yellow range and I'm going to really pump up the saturation here. Just like this, lovely. And let's go into the midtones. Again, I'm making use of a warm color tone, somewhere in the yellow range and bring up the saturation. However, I don't want to go as high as with the highlights. So this should be fine. And then we can go into the shadows to get some color contrast. I'm going to use a cold hue and just very slightly bump up the saturation. Perfect. Now we're almost done. I think I want to also add some vignetting. So let's open up the effects panel and let's see, just bring, bring it down a notch. Okay, finally I'm heading into the calibration tab to bring down the blue primary hue and raise the saturation here. Done. So that's almost it for the raw adjustments. You can see we went from this original version to this shot, which looks so much better with just a few raw adjustments. However, we have quite heavily manipulated the exposure, which results in a lot of noise in here. So to counter that problem, thankfully Adobe has added something very, very good. So let's head into the details tab. And what we want to use here is the AI noise reduction. All we have to do here is to just click the denoise button. With this, you get a little preview window. So if I hold down the mouse and just click in the image, you can see here's the image with the noise and here without it. So the noise is pretty much gone, but we're not losing any sharpness. Let's, let me show you a different area right here on the tree with AI noise reduction without it. As you can see, this tool is insanely good. And all I have to do now is to just click on Enchance. So this process might take a while for your system, but it's totally worth it. And here we have the finished image. So all that's left to do now is to do a bunch of Photoshop adjustments. So let's open up this object. First off, let me clean up this image. I'm duplicating that layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. And I'm grabbing the spot healing brush, zooming in a bit, and I want to get rid of a few distracting objects. So those sun rays I really can't get rid of. What I could have done is to block the sun with my finger 
while shooting the scene and basically stacking those two images above each other to get rid of those sun rays. But I can change it now, so it doesn't really matter that much. I also want to get rid of a few sun flares here. All right, looks so much cleaner. Then what I want to do next is to apply a little bit of dodging. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. For the dodging of this image, I want to make use of the TK panel plugin. So first off, I want to make a few areas right here in the tree brighter and maybe even in the highlights right there. This means we want to use the lights mask. So I'm clicking through it real quick. I think the lights too works pretty well, so I'm activating the layer mask mode and click on lights too. This adds this luminosity mask on the layer mask on the overlay layer. Then I can grab the brush tool with the foreground color set to white and the opacity of the brush lowered a little bit. Then I'm just going to paint over a few areas which I want to make brighter. At first, this doesn't seem like much, but you can see the difference when I deactivate this layer. So here is the before version and here the after version. Just a subtle change, but it looks great. Then let's also add a little more glow in the center. I'm going to duplicate that layer and let's switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, I'm making use of the brush. Let's bring down the brush opacity, however. And I want to pick a color from those from that sun star. So right about here, and I'm going to make the brush a lot bigger, just like that. And then I'm brushing in there once, just like this, should be enough. We could maybe brush along the tree a little bit to emphasize this glow effect. But I'm quite happy with how this is looking. And at this point, we are done editing this image. You can see you can restore some pretty heavily underexposed images using just a bunch of raw adjustments thanks to the new AI noise removal. However, if you want to have the best image quality, I highly recommend using HDR to really bring out all the details from the shadows and the highlights. You can clearly see in this image we could have done a better job with the area around the sun or I should have waited a few more minutes for the sun to set a little more. However, I think this image looks very, very good considering how things have started with this one. So if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.